Uh, so, for one, MS is predominantly women um, with a ratio that's almost three to one. Um, so about 75% will be women and maybe 25% will be men. Um, and those numbers seem to decrease as you follow the disease course. Um, more importantly, like if you look at early on in the course and people are being diagnosed in their 20s and maybe even younger than that, um, the female predominance is much greater. But when people are being diagnosed in their 40s and 50s, that um, difference is really not seen all that much. It's almost like um, maybe a two to one and maybe even a one to one to some degree. And what's also interesting about that is that as you make these diagnoses later, you see more primary progressive patients um, in their 40s and 50s being diagnosed with MS. And there's almost a, a one to one match with male to female ratios there. So there's something hormonal about that. We don't know exactly what it is. But there have been several different studies that have demonstrated that um, testosterone plays a role in maybe the susceptibility of getting MS. So low levels of testosterone seem to increase the risk to develop MS. And in addition to that, women who have low levels of testosterone or high levels of estrogens seem to be at increased risk for both getting the disease and also for um, having the disease become more active and be more progressive. So there's definitely a hormonal piece to that. And you look at <clears throat> the patients who are um, already diagnosed with MS, the rate of progression seems to correlate with testosterone levels. So the lower the level, the greater the risk. Um, so testosterone may be somewhat protective in that regard. Um, so there's a, a lot of interest in this, although, you know, treating a disease that's more women than men with testosterone has its own issues. And one of the big issues there becomes um, the side effect profile of testosterone treatment for women, for men. The main issues become um, other concerns, high blood pressure, cardiac concerns, um, you know, things that you typically see in men as you age. So there's a whole host of issues we have to address, but it's a fascinating area and really needs a lot more study. Yeah, so people have looked at to see whether or not there is a gender difference in the therapeutic effects of the currently available treatments, and it doesn't seem to be any real major differences in terms of who's going to respond to one drug or another based on sex differences. So um, I don't think that anything about how we're dealing with MS currently is, is going to be a concern in that regard, but I do think that maybe we will see more targeted therapies that include maybe as add-on therapy or as primary therapies for hormonal effects and being able to really start asking questions about whether or not we need to get people up to a good level of testosterone before we start you know making changes in therapy maybe you know the effect of a drug would be more effective if the testosterone levels are adequate or something like that so that's something that we're currently investigating as well Well, not that it's a uh, clear effect um, that would be sex differences, but we definitely need more effective therapies to deal with the progressive phase of MS. I think we've gotten pretty good at dealing with relapses and the frequency of them and the severity of them. And maybe at some level, the um, amount of brain damage that occurs that we see on MRI scans. But we know that the disease progresses at some low level despite getting rid of all those attacks and we need better strategies to deal with that component. The problem with um, men in particular is that they seem to progress at a faster rate when you look at the patients who have secondary progressive disease they seem to progress at a faster rate than women and there is an association in their testosterone levels that may contribute to that <clears throat> but even despite that, um, we have a huge unmet need for this phase of MS. 
For the primary progressive disease, we have one drug that was approved just a, a month or so ago that is effective for primary progressive patients. And interestingly enough, it seemed to have more of an effect on the male population than on the female population. Um, but even despite that, we need, we need to be able to figure out how to protect the brain, how to kind of slow down this slow smoldering progressive phase, um, give people stability. Um, we think that at least in the inflammatory phase of the disease, we're doing better at controlling that element, but we need to attack the progressive phase much more aggressively.